Hey there, Patty Dominguez, episode 104 of the Positioning to Profit podcast. Thanks for being here. Today is a solo show, and on this show, I am going to be talking about how to remove the clutter in your business. And it's not necessarily about these specific line items or the the tactical stuff. This is going into the mindset part of it because I have to tell you, this is a topic that's come up a couple of times between this week and last week. So I'm like, okay, this warrants a convo specifically about what's causing this overwhelm and making sure that we are keeping on track or removing those elements that is creating all of this confusion. There's so much confusion out there. So that's the topic of this episode. Now, if you haven't already done so, head on over to nicheandpitch.com. You can spell it either way. So some people will spell it N-I-C-H-E and pitch.com, which is the correct way. But if you don't know and you're like, how do you spell it again? Just spell it N-I-T-C-H and pitch.com and you're going to get to the same page. The Niche and Pitch is going to give you a couple of free training videos that gives you the introduction on how to demystify your positioning in your business. If you've ever felt like your message is not hitting the mark, then this is perfect for you. And so this is going to be talking about positioning, which is my jam and it's my specialty. So I'd love you to get immediate access. And all you have to do is head on over to nicheandpitch.com. And with that, let us get on with the show to let go of that overwhelm and clutter. Ready? All right, here we go. Hey there, I'm Patty Dominguez. You're about to discover what it means to position your brand and your business to stand out. This show explores the stories of small business owners just like you who are bringing their message out to the world and impacting their tribe. So if you want to take your business to a category of one status, then hang with me because this podcast shares everything you need to know about how to be more prolific with your brand so that you can have more profits. All right. Thanks for joining me on the episode, whether I'm catching you on the treadmill, maybe you're up for a walk, maybe you're playing me in the car. And thank you. That is first and foremost. I love when I hear back from people that have listened to the podcast and say, I really enjoyed this episode. So just as a request, if you do enjoy the episode, I love to get the the word from you. And if you feel inclined to leave a rating and review, uh, that would just make my day. And I will give you a shout out on the show as well. Okay, so with that, today is talking about letting go of overwhelm because this is, again, something that's come up. And I'm going to give you an example as to what it means is how many times do we feel compelled to join a specific group? It could be a membership. It could be a course. And I can tell you it is so alluring. Uh, It is so intriguing, curious, open loops, persuasive, whatever it is that you are confronted with, especially in the online marketing world. I can tell you I, for one, once upon a time, had a major case of coursearitis. Coursearitis meaning I would just buy the next product because I was really interested and I thought, well, maybe this is the secret. And for me personally, it was a whole host of things is I was really lacking the belief in myself. I was lacking the trust and really looking inwards on the intuition side and knowing that I did have the ability to create a business. I did have the ability to succeed in business. I was just not believing in myself. And that was creating a whole lot of overwhelm for me. And in the process, I was swindled out of money where people were promising these grand things and they didn't deliver. And when I worked on all that stuff with my dear mentor, Jim Fortin, those were my decisions. Those were my choices and really taking on personal responsibility to recognize that I created that situation. And looking back, I really recognized that I was creating the overwhelm. I was choosing to participate in that. Now, it's easy to say, okay, got it. So I have to be careful about the choices I make. Well, what if you know better, but then you're still feeling overwhelmed or uncertain? And I have to tell you that one of the most empowering things that I could do to gain clarity is I'm a recondo my business. And I'm pretty specific about it, meaning... We had a conversation about this in Prolific Cafe, and one of the mavens was talking about how there's a little bit of overwhelm there. The earnings 
have not been there. And so what can she do? So the cool thing is that we live in the solution, meaning, okay, well, let's brainstorm where the hiccup is or what the belief is around that. So we know that it's not for a lack of here's how to do a launch or here's how to create a sales page or here's how to create your welcome sequence. It's not any of that because what if you did have those elements in place and you're still overwhelmed? Or I could tell you another situation where we had a maven who I had a conversation with and one of the questions that she had, she's just like, I mean, I, I'm in fear, you know, I feel vulnerable to share that with you because I'm recognizing that I do have fear and it's okay. The first part of it is admitting that you have fear and there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame because once you know You have the awareness and then you can do something about it. And so what we came to understand in both cases of those cases is when you have too much choice, when you have too many options on the table, in my in my opinion, in my experience, that causes confusion. It reminds me of a story of when I was in corporate and I shared this as well, where when I was in corporate, there were peers that were over in Europe. So I had a specific job and I'd meet with my counterparts over in Europe. And so we'd meet quarterly, whether it was, I don't know, conferences or team meetings, et cetera, et cetera. So I had one colleague who came over from Switzerland and I was hosting her and showing her around and it was really a pleasure to meet her. And so long story short, we went out to dinner and then right after dinner, I said, okay, do you want to grab a drink or what do you want to do? And she said, I really want to go to Target. And I said, okay, are you <laughs> are you sure you want to go to Target? And she's like, yeah, no, no, I really want to go to Target. I've heard it's amazing. I was like, okay, uh, yeah, all right, so let's go to Target. So we went to Target and we were in the personal hygiene section. And she literally, her eyes could not get wider. She was completely blown away with the incredible amounts of toothpaste. She's like, how is it that this entire wall, this shelf wall is full of all these options of toothpaste? She's like, how do you decide? And she's like, I don't even know where to start, you know? And I said, oh my gosh, that's so funny. And I said, well, how many options for toothpaste do you guys have in Switzerland? And she's like, well, my personal shop, we have two options. She's like, that's all you really need. And I laughed. I was like, oh my gosh. And she's like, it's so decadent. It's so decadent to have all these choices. But she said, what's really causing me is like, I'm confused. So this is a story about toothpaste. No, it is a story about when you have too many choices, it can create overwhelm. So I'm going to share with you again, the conversation I had with one of my clients, which we call in Prolific Cafe, our mavens. She had brought to light that she was a little bit stuck. And then I said, okay, well, what's going on? And she's like, well, so-and-so guru said this. And then I heard from that guru who said that. And then in the conversation where, as I was like mining for information, you can get to the root of where the the hiccups are, or where the bottlenecks are in the thinking. And I said to her, as I played back, I'm like, you literally mentioned three or four different gurus here. And I have to tell you, if you ask 10 marketers their opinion, they'll give you 10 different answers. And and it's like, well, how many answers do you need before you believe in yourself enough to make the decision that's right for you? And that's it. When you have too many choices and you're looking externally for the answer, sure, it does make sense to take a look at options. But If you're in that state, and only you will know that if you're in fight, flight, or freeze, if you have too many options. See, it's a lot of fun to spend and to get that, that hit, right? The dopamine hit of, I got this course and it's really cool. I got this course on Instagram, or I got this thing on uh, copywriting, or I got this course on how to create a challenge. It's a lot of choices. And so sometimes that causes this feeling of like, okay, well, where do I start? Where do I get started? You're rolling up your sleeves and you're thinking, oh, I shouldn't have pot, like I shouldn't have paid for this course. Did I really need it? Yes, yes, you probably have coursearitis. I can tell you that one of the best things that you can do is take inventory. Did you really need it? And not to create shame or any of that stuff, but it's taking a look back and saying, did I really need this? What if I just trusted myself more? What if I cho- chose to Marie Kondo my business and keep it really lean. So with that particular client, we talked about the idea of just follow the one, meaning 
not the one, like the best guru or the best marketing coach or anything like that, but pick one. Pick one that you trust, that you believe in, that is going to guide you, and then turn off all the other noise and just focus on keeping it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple and decide to let go of the overwhelm. Decide to unsubscribe to all these newsletters that you have in your inbox that are just sitting there collecting a lot of clutter around different ideas and concepts that people are selling you, which by the way, I love to sell and I love to purchase things. I love to invest in myself, right? There's nothing wrong with sales. In fact, I believe that if I can help somebody with something, I have a moral responsibility to help them. So it's not about selling. It's about clearing the clutter, meaning keeping your eye on the prize of what you want to achieve, having the vision in your business, and then picking a lane, picking a coach, and then following that until until you're able to grow your email list and and achieve the success, until you're able to meet that income threshold that is meaningful, that becomes a convincer for you that this is working, right? Just pick a lane, but just pick one and then Marie Kondo your business and let go of clutter because that's what's creating the overwhelm. Just keep it simple because I promise you, wherever you go, chances are the marketing tactics are pretty much the same. Yes, they're going to give you the different ways of doing it, but at the core, a lot of these concepts are pretty much the same. Instead, choose to work with a coach that is going to guide you that has a proven track record and success path for you, and then just follow that course and then shut everything else off. Meaning if you're working with one coach in your business or marketing, pick one. Of course, that does not include any, you know, personal development, coaching or health coaching, et cetera. But if it's specific to that industry or to that segment or what have you, like a marketing coach, et cetera, just pick one and then write it until, until you have the convincers, the proven success results that, that show you that you are on the right track and then just let go of everything else. Okay. So with that, just remember when you have so many options, so many options on the table, so many courses, so many this, so many that, it does cause fight, flight, or freeze. It's normal. So let go of the dopamine hit of charging that other course and that other thing on your credit card and instead just pick a lane. Pick a lane, write it until, and let me know how it works. All right, and with that, uh, we'll see you on the next episode. If I can personally help you with your business to keep it simple with the systems, the skill stacking, the positioning so that you can stand out with a beautiful community and crazy amounts of accountability and support, definitely check out prolificcafe.com, prolificcafe.com, and we'll see you on the next episode. All right, thanks. Thank you so much for checking out the Positioning to Profit podcast. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new episodes. And also, it would mean the world to me if you would take a quick moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast player. It really helps to get the word out about the podcast and of course, the featured guests. And lastly, please make sure to connect with me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm on all of them and use hashtag positioning to profit so that I can (laughs) search you out and connect that way too. All right. Thanks so much. See you next time.